Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am Adrienne, I live in New York City, and I love playing with makeup. And today I'm gonna be wanting to play around with some new, more luxury items that I have been already playing around with, I have some opinions on. So if you wanna see me play with some makeup, we have some by Terry. We have Lisa Eldridge. We have Charlotte Tilbury. We have who else? We have some Hourglass. So yeah, if that interests you and kind of just unwinding, stay tuned. I am wearing my well, my Where's Waldo slash um, holiday PJ. I don't know, it's so soft and cozy. What should we start with? I have nothing on my face, so maybe we'll start with just some primer this is the laura geller spackle primer it's mattifying actually but it's kind of like emollient too i don't know it's weird it's a it's an odd mattifying formula almost feels a, li a little like the danessa myricks um balm it has kind of that texture so if you like that texture you might really like this and this comes in a pump form so super convenient. Let me just get a dud out of the way because I would have used it right now. And it's really a dud because I can't get it to work. I cashed in a lot of Ulta points to get the Hourglass number 28 lip treatment oil. I have heard about this for years. I really love luscious lip products. I've done a great declutter. I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to splurge. I'm going to get it. And it's a beautiful component. And I got mine in a color, got mine in the shade Cameo. So I thought, well, let's throw some, a little bit of color in there. And it's also nourishing. I have clicked this 400 times. I was on a conference call today and I was just clicking it and no product comes out. I cannot get the product to come out of this for the life of me. So based on that alone, not only is this going back, but I won't even entertain purchasing another one because if a component is that fickle and you're charging $58, components should not be fickle at that price point. So for that reason, I would not recommend this. I, I don't care what kind of magic elixir is in there. So let's use a different balm. Oh, you know which one we can use? We can use the Victoria Beckham lip gloss. I just want a little something on my lips. I actually got this gloss free with purchase. It's really feels nourishing, really beautiful high gloss. I am not a clear gloss person normally, but I am so happy to have this. And of course, it's the same beautiful packaging with the kind of tortoisey shell coloring on top. And it's a nice thick formula, but it's not gloopy and it just feels really, really nourishing. And so this was an absolute surprise and I didn't pay for it. Well, I mean, I paid for it because I bought six eyeliners I bought six eyeliners because my mom borrowed one of my eyeliners and I said, you can't do that. And so she's like, but I love it so much. Can, can you show me where you buy this? And so when I went online at Victoria Beckham, she was having a sale of like a vault where you could pick the six shades. So actually I got myself a replacement one. Uh, my sister got one and my mom got four. And so I, I gifted it to my mom. So she is so happy. She has really nice, fancy eyeliner. She really uses eyeliner a lot. I kind of really like what that mattifying primer did. And I almost feel like I don't want to put on foundation. Maybe what I will do next is I will put on this By Terry Brightening CC Serum in Sunny Flash. This is probably one of By Terry's most famous products and I loved that it came in a travel size because I used a different color once a long time ago and I couldn't see a difference. I was like, why did I buy this? I don't understand. But I knew Sunny Flash was the one most people really love and you see it's 
kind of a, a little orangey, super liquidy, super liquidy, and smells like rose. Almost all of By Terry products smell like rose. Some people get really sick by the smell of rose. I don't mind it. It's better to me than I say like the YSL scents in their makeup or the Chanel scent in their makeup. Those drive me a little crazy. I actually like the Chanel one, but it just doesn't sit well with me. So that is the Sunny Flash. It's pretty, really does give some vitality. I know there are a lot of people who just kind of put it on everywhere. I think I might try that maybe in the summer or spring when it makes more sense for my complexion to have kind of color everywhere. But I like the glow that it gives. I hope you can see. It just gave a little bit of color, a little bit of glow. I could see why this is a popular product and it's also so thin. For other complexion products, I'm thinking I'm gonna play around with my Hourglass palette. So my mom gifted this one to me for my birthday in October and I love it. It's this one here. I haven't been touching it too much because I'm trying to kind of get through my old one. I have a Hourglass from a few seasons or more than a few Christmases ago and I've hit pan on almost everything. You see, I've like hit pan there and there, but I love this one. I use a lot of the blushes. So I've just been trying to commit myself to using this one in particular for like maybe through January um, and February and get good use out of it before I kind of move on to these. Um, because I have a feeling that once I start using these, I won't stop. I, I really do like these kind of palettes when you find a color combination that works, I actually do think it is a great value and it's so, so lovely. It's just so lovely and luxurious. But I actually love this one so much that I went and picked up the Tiger palette, which is a bit richer. But what I loved about it is I loved this kind of tone of bronzer. Potentially it's kind of a little reddish and it reminded me of the House Labs bronzer that I've fallen in love with, which is not a bronzer. It is actually a highlighter. This one by House Labs in Chocolate Opal. I've talked about this one before on my channel. I have used it. It looks like it would be a crazy highlighter for my skin tone, but I don't use it as a highlighter. I use it as a bronzer, a glowy bronzer, and it is gorgeous, gorgeous. And I've talked about it before. I won't talk about it again, but no one's talking about using that for kind of medium to fair skin tones as a bronzer, but I can't recommend it enough. It's so beautiful. So I thought this one was very much like that in that kind of vein. There's just like a red rosiness in it. So I am going to use that to top up and deepen the perimeter of my face a little bit. I've been having a crazy eye twitch. <laughs> This happens to me in winter months. I don't understand it. I've been to doctors about it. They can't, it can't help me. I don't know. But it happens to me in winter months that I get these crazy eye twitches in both my eyes sometimes, especially by the end of the day. I honestly think it's like a lack of light. Using a light hand and I'm using a pretty dense brush. I think that's a really pretty bronzer. You can go more heavy handed depending on, on you know where you're at, but I do like that. I do like that on me. It gives me a nice glow. I want to, I think, go in with this. Is this a blush? Well, we're gonna use it as a blush. A bit glowy. This color is actually like a strobing highlighter but I think it makes for a pretty blush. And it blends really nicely with that bronzer. So I haven't fall, fallen in love with a six pan palette until this year. And like I said, I fell in love with two of them. So I would recommend these. I feel like this is luxury done right. I don't have anything for my eyebrows that's new or luxury. I really like my tried and true. So. I'm just gonna fill them in quickly. 
So that works for me. I'm using the KVD Beauty Brow Struck. I don't think this has come out yet again, but I have a feeling they're gonna have to bring it out because it was just such an incredible brow product. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping they will bring it out. I think maybe we should just get it over with. I picked up one of the Charlotte Tilbury's pop shots, the hypnotizing pop shots. I got mine in the color Lover's Diamond. And the packaging is just gorgeous. It's really, really pretty. It's just like just enough sparkle and specialness. So definitely killed it with the packaging. Charlotte Tilbury does not always kill it with the packaging. I think the packaging on some of her products is actually not up to par with where it should be. I'm thinking especially like the quads. A lot of the quads that she sells, I feel like they should have a nicer packaging to them for their price point. But this one is really pretty and the color is really nice, but the product itself is so ho-hum. It's nothing special. This is it. It's It looks nice, but it's no more special than any other kind of just bronzy gold color. I feel like I've encountered this color in so many palettes. It isn't, yeah, it's just not special. It's not special. It's a coppery, it's a coppery color. That's it, that's it for a lot of money. The folks over at Charlotte Tilbury who are doing some planning are looking to do something like this, like these a special, real sparkly topper. They could have taken a page out of so many others' books. I mean, they should have gone down the route of Cleona Shadows. You know, something really, really beautiful, multi-chromatic maybe, uh, maybe super, super sparkly and jelly. I'm thinking more like, I would say even the Victoria Beckham single, um, single like lid lusters. Those are incredible. I just think this is very, very ho-hum. And I was so, so disappointed. I just quickly removed it. Um, but in recently comparing a lot of my singles for myself, I kind of did a little mini declutter and I looked at all the single cream shadows, topper shadows that I have. I think really what I came to realize is even the eyes that mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury, they're very dull. They're very nice. They're very creamy, but they're very dull. You have to think of them more as a daytime, really nice shadow, but kind of daytime. But if what you're looking for is something really impactful, sparkly, I say definitely go towards the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters. They're really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I mean, gorgeous packaging and they have a nice little stopper inside and they are just super impactful. I will swatch both colors that I have just so you could see kind of the difference. So I think this is mink. And I mean, it has so much dimension so much dimension. I mean, it's, you feel like, okay, I'm okay having spent this money, you know, that kind of feeling. It, they're really, really nice. The other one that I have is chiffon. One here, a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter. They're so creamy. And that one, hopefully you can see it's, this one's just a little bit brighter, more subtle. What I tried to do was get a shade that I would wear if maybe I was wearing a really bold lip and another shade if I wanted to wear more of a nude lip because, you know, these, these are expensive and I wanted them to be special and something I used. So, yeah, I would recommend those, but definitely skip on the Charlotte Tilbury pop and, you know, really think about how you would use like the eyes to mesmerize. The other ones that I would recommend if you're looking for a really beautiful, sparkly, special kind of thing are the Bodyography, 
ones. I think people talk about these, but I don't know that they still talk about them. I have three shades in Stratus, Bubbly, and Halo. They come in these little pots, and again, they have a great stopper. These are super sparkly. This is the shade Stratus. They're almost like puffy. They're almost thinner in a way, but even more impactful. But these are gorgeous. And I feel like you can get these on sale and they're not at that not at exactly the price point of that we're talking about, but they feel so luxurious. Their packaging is really, really nice. So that's more of a yellowy gold. Again, just super reflective. And that's bubbly. Is Halo, which is more of a silver. So I just hope you can see. So those are just some recommendations on single shadows that could make you feel really luxurious and special, especially during the holiday season. But now I digress and it's time to delve into the other kind of little monster in the, in the room. Lisa Eldridge recently released, as we all know, um, eyeshadow palettes and I picked mine up in Sorcery. The packaging is gorgeous. It has this like embossment on this side, nice and smooth on this side. It's actually quite lightweight um, but also heavy. It's kind of weird. It, it has a little bit of both and it comes with this kind of really pretty insert here that has Lisa Eldridge with her signature with the lip, which is very cute. And then a nice mirror. And I loved this color story. I just thought it was really pretty. Um, it was the most exciting of all the color stories. I hope you could see this one has like a, a flip to it that's like kind of lime green. This shadow here is very interesting. It's super thin and almost you think there's something wrong with it. Almost like no base to it. Swatch it. So that's this color here. It has a very little base to it, but when light hits it, you can then see that green flash. So over a dark base color, this is really going to pop. But the formula itself is almost sandy. There's almost like a sandy dry quality to it. In fact, I was very surprised at the way the texture felt and the fact that it still performs. So credit to her team for developing a shadow that actually works very well, but I'm not happy with the way it feels the way it feels, the way it feels going on. So it's impactful visually, but going on, not that great. So that shadow that I that I just swatched was called Mercurial, and it is considered a luminous duo. That is the type of formula. There are three kinds of formulas in this palette. Um, then we have the four metallics in Mage, Swan Song, Madrigal, and Grotto. So that blue looks really beautiful. This is sort of like a dirty gold, dirty gold silver. It's a weird kind of in-between color. As I've been playing around with this, I think initially I was very disappointed with this palette because I don't know what I was expecting, but I was expecting more luscious, creamy shadows. I was expecting there to be almost I, I once upon a time I had a lot of the Burberry shadows and those are like silky and they the color like just blends itself and I really used to love those shadows a lot and I almost felt like in thinking about Lisa's aesthetic which she's like definitely top three YouTube gurus of all time makeup artists I love her I love her aesthetic but when I thought about her aesthetic and I thought, ooh, if she developed shadows, I thought she would go down the line of that kind of those Burberry shadows. And so that did not happen here. This is kind of a dirty green gold. This is more of a sagey, um, but also has like some aqua in it. So I do like the colors once I, I look at them differently. 
Then you have the Seamless Matte, which is in a kind of really dark foresty green. And that one does have a very creamy kind of consistency. It reminds me of the Natasha Denona creams. But so those are really like the colors of the palette. You have that thin topper, but actually that's super impactful. And you have the metallics and you have that creamy matte. I'm gonna start with that creamy matte in that foresty green. I'm not gonna put on eyeshadow primer. And I think if you're like really interested in this color story, outside of the blue, it did kind of remind me a little bit of this little Sigma 9 pan, the Ivy palette, this one here. There's just something about it that kind of reminded me of it. It has that kind of a dirty gold. It has a it has a lot of uniqueness to it and it's pretty affordable and you get a lot. And I really, really love this formula of Sigma. I don't always love uh, Sigma shadows, but I do love that nine pan. So I'm just putting some more of that evergreen color. And I do really love this color. I love this color on my eyes. I just think it's a nice flattering dark shade. And the shades, they blend really, really well. What I also appreciate and I thought I wasn't gonna get out of this kind of formula is that the shadows actually can be built up to be rich. I thought I was gonna struggle with that. I couldn't figure out in a lot of um, her video presentation of all the color stories, if it could go as rich and deep as I kind of like to push some colors. So I'm happy to report that you actually can. Next, I'm gonna go in with that other kind of minty green. I'm gonna, just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna go right over that shadow. A little bit into the inner corner. And honestly, I think that's a really pretty eye look. Just like this, with this, the dark green, the diffuse, it's, it's a color story that I would absolutely wear daytime. It's really, really pretty. I think if I wanted to amp it up a little, I could take a little bit of that sparkle shade and maybe hit the inner corner. And you can kind of see it there. It's very subtle. It's much more impactful if you put it on over a dark shadow. Let's play around with that blue because I have not played around with that blue and I would love to see how it really performs. I've played around with it like here and there as an eyeliner, things like that, but I don't feel like I've really done it justice. I really do tend to love like a nice rich navy bluey what happens though with these colors sometimes with blues is they can go black real easy or kind of like a little muddy. But I think that's pretty vivid. I think that, that it held its blue. Now the question is, do I wanna use this weird steely gray or this gold? I'll use the gold. So that is that like kind of dirty gold. I like that one. There's only one color left in the palette, so I'm gonna use it because I have to. I just have to. And it's that kind of bizarre gris, grayish, grayish color. And I'm gonna try to use it as liner. So it gave me a little bit of definition, but I think this shade would be probably really pretty as a one and done. I think the takeaway for me is, I don't know that I would think of this as a palette in my collection. When I think of a palette, I think of maybe having more playtime with options. For me, I would probably, and I, and I am gonna store this in the section of kind of my special toppers and shadows that are one and dones because I think that's where this is gonna be very useful to me. So I, think using this and thinking about this in my life as a bunch of one and done shadows, you can mix and match them, but they have this type of texture 
that's really easy to put on with your finger. I want to put them with kind of my creamier shadows. I don't have a lot of them, but like, like those, you know, uh, shadows I highlighted before. The Lid Lusters from Victoria Beckham, the Bodyography. I think that this is in good company when it sits with that. Again, like the price point is crazy, but I feel like it's definitely luxurious. It's definitely like a beautiful little trinket. And I don't know, it's not as crazy as like some of the stupid Tom Ford quads that are sometimes terrible, terrible, terrible. So when I think of it that way, I'm like, you go, Lisa, you go, you go get your money, girl. Would I pick up another one? I know that there's like a few other formulas. So I think what I would do probably is I would revisit all of them and analyze whether or not they would fit into that kind of one and done category for me. Cream shadow lives in that kind of drawer. If I see that there's another palette that's kind of unique to that, I maybe would, would pick up another one. But I certainly wouldn't pick up any of the ones that are like super neutral. Maybe if anything, it would be kind of the purpley one, but not the super neutral ones, not the day to day. That's just not my vibe at all. I have plenty of palettes that do day to day taupe brown stuff like that. Perfectly fine. I, I don't I don't need another one and I don't need one for like 68 bucks. But I'm really happy actually with both of those looks you can accomplish a lot with them and they look like you worked really hard at creating them. And that's really nice too, when you think about it, like the makeup is making your life easier. One other thing that I can certainly pass judgment on, <laughs> moving on is mascara. This is the Victoria Beckham mascara. People raved about this. It is really gorgeous packaging so i'm not gonna like knock it for any of that it has a really cool wand to it super small i have been using this on and off for months it's actually time for me to let it go and so now i can give you my honest assessment of what i thought of it what's nice about the wand is it's so slim and so fine that it really does let you touch every single one of your lashes, including lashes you didn't know existed. The really short, fine ones that I have um, in between, it kind of grabs them and coats them. The formula to me has always been very gummy, but that's understandable because it is a tubing mascara. And I am not the biggest fan of tubing mascaras, so it does do its job. It coats the lashes. You could see, hopefully you can see the job it did. It gives me a nice natural look. The problem is that they f my lashes now feel really heavy. They feel very heavy. They feel very gummy. And as the day progresses, it flakes. It flakes on me. I can find entire little pieces of lash because it looks like lashes coming off um, on my face by maybe the seventh sixth hour mark and that's kind of like unforgivable for for a mascara right like get that right especially again at this price point other other mascaras are doing it way better <laughs> is basically like my opinion even as the mascara dries, there's still a tiny bit of tackiness that I feel like sometimes my lashes get caught together um, in a weird way, like Aeon Flux, I can catch a bug. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's from the 90s, MTV. I did, like I said, rediscover my love for the Victoria Beckham Kajal liner. I got recently the color Fig, which so I will line my eyes. It's super, super creamy. You don't even have to apply a lot of pressure. It's an incredible formula. I think that's why my mom was like so in love because 
she's older and your eye area gets more and more tender as you age and anything that's like yanking or pulling you know i even see it sometimes if i purse my lips the wrinkle stays for a bit and by you reach my mom's age it stays for longer than a bit so you are much more cognizant of you know how your makeup is interacting with your skin and if you're having to pull at your skin it's a real bad idea real bad idea by the way i did not i don't get a lot of fallout from that shadow palette so that's a great thing too for my lips i have four different lipsticks i'm gonna swatch for you and remove uh maybe ending with my favorite one or my most comfortable one so i did pick up two more lisa eldridge lipsticks i picked up velvet sorcery just because it seemed so hyped it seemed like it would be a color i like kind of like a nudie brown now i'm not in love with lisa eldridge's velvet formula i find that the lipsticks crack very easily and they are a bit too drying but if you want a fully opaque lip almost editorial there's really not a lot like it out there but if you want something like it that i feel is just a bit more hydrating i would definitely go to the pat mcgrath matte trance formula i love love those lipsticks especially when they're fresh it has this like little oiliness that has a little more slip than the lisa eldridge ones so that is velvet sorcery it's actually a color i like it's growing on me it looks a little more red ish on camera but in person it does pull a bit more brown and i do like it for that reason it's a pretty color the formula actually does feel creamier than some of the other velvet lipsticks that i have so i wonder if some adjustment wasn't made to the formula to add a little bit more hydration because this one definitely feels more hydrating another lipstick i picked up from lisa eldridge is rose official this is in the pretty sure this is the Lucent line. Um, this is my favorite line of Lisa Eldridge's lipsticks because they're so creamy and they're not like highly, highly shiny or anything. It's like a nice satin formula, but the pigment is typically just a bit more sheer and a little more forgiving. And so I love the Lucent formula highly recommend any of those lipsticks and so i wanted to pick up another one I like this one for a pink that leans a little more warm probably for spring summer i picked up one of these lipsticks by by terry i hadn't seen it before it's almost like a hydrating lip balmy formula i picked mine up in sexy nude it has again that rose fragrance so it's not for everyone it feels really nice gliding on the color's a little too nude for me, but with a lip liner, it will probably work really well. I like having one or two shades that are like this that work nicely with lip liners. And the formula feels very nourishing, feels like it has a lot of oil in it. I'm hoping that the fragrance in it doesn't dry out my lips over time. Sometimes when I use products like this that have any kind of fragrance, over many days of wear, I will notice my lips become drier and drier and drier. But so far so good. And I like the neutralness of this nude. And last but not least, I picked up a Victoria Beckham lipstick. I have had this on my wish list for well over a year. It is the color Girl and it's this kind of slim lipstick. Really beautiful, easy to apply. Now this nude, I love. It's a little bit warmer, still quite pale, but it doesn't wash out my lips. And I think it's really flattering. A beautiful little treat. And that in conjunction with the lip gloss, let's put that on again. 
there you go. It's just perfect. I love it. I love it. So that is my kind of luxurious makeup haul and my thoughts on the products. I hope you enjoyed that. I would love to hear your opinions. What is worth hauling in the luxury world? What do you think I would like? What should I put on my wish list? Do you have different opinions about where I went with this? I'm sure I'm gonna get yelled at for Lisa Eldridge and not being like over the moon and for some other things, but it is what it is. I, like I said, um, it has nothing to do with the creator. I love the creator, but I think it's really important that we try to provide honest feedback about our experiences with the product because there may be many of you that have similar skin type and similar experiences to mine and you kind of think am i alone on this island i hate that feeling i hate that feeling so hopefully you don't have that feeling anymore and there's another person on this island <laughs> of misfit toys i think next up i want to do like i said kind of a swatch collection fest of lip colors and I'm going to start with browns and brownie kind of lippies. I think, I think y'all will really enjoy that. And also I have to go through a couple of different palettes that I have been playing with and kind of give you a roundup of those, as well as talking about Moira Cosmetics. I've been playing around with a lot of those products that I ordered from Moira and I definitely have opinions, um, some really incredible, incredible products. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I hope you all are getting ready for a wonderful weekend. Okay, take care everyone. Bye.